PAX East has turned into a little mini E3. Well, I shouldn't say mini because it's huge. But developers are previewing more and more games there. Nintendo shocked me by announcing just two weeks ago that games like Dark Souls, Wolfenstein 2, Travis Strikes Again, Donkey Kong Country, all these unreleased games will be playable at PAX East. I was lucky enough to get my hands on some of them. Nintendo does not make things easy for some of us YouTubers out here. I'll put time codes to all the different games that I'm gonna talk about in the description below so you can just jump to the game that you wanna hear about if you don't wanna watch this whole thing. But you totally should because, I mean, I make like great videos. The Nintendo booth was a madhouse. It was way smaller than it probably should have been. The line was huge and constantly capped off. Listen, nobody likes waiting on lines. I've got things to do too. I figured out, hey, no big. I'll get in there eventually. Maybe I can get there early one day before the line even starts. I had forgotten that I had an appointment at the Nintendo booth to play Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Of course, this appointment wasn't set up by Nintendo because why would they ever email me? Ha ha ha! Unfortunately, this appointment was late in the day. We were able to just walk right in, meet up with our contact there and get our hands on the game right after he pushed me to the front of the line cutting in front of all of these people who have been waiting hours to get in, this did not feel too good. So I kind of plowed through the demo. The Nintendo rep said co-op cuts the demo time in half. It was me and the Nintendo rep slicing up bad guys and in toilets together. Now, I have no experience with No More Heroes. I've never played any of the other ones. All I know is that Suda51 is kind of a big deal and a lot of people seemed really excited when this game was announced. So I'm just doing my job here by checking out this game and seeing if it's any good. What do you, do? What do you even do? I feel like a fraud. I feel like an asshole. Like, oh, you're some legendary game developer and I don't know what you're not doing. You know everybody's excited about that game. I know everybody's excited. It's basically just a beat-em-up. The controls are pretty complex in that every button does a hundred different things. You have to keep an eye on your battery meter and every once in a while you have to charge that battery by whacking it off. Like this. I don't know why he does it down here. It seems much less efficient. As you can see, in multiplayer, one third of the screen is taken up by the HUD. So far, it seems like the multiplayer is local only, which is a bit of a shame, but I'd imagine Nintendo didn't make it easy for them to develop online features. All in all, it was fun. This is definitely something I would suggest playing with a friend to get that old Turtles in Time or Double Dragon vibe. Other than that, I'm not any more excited about this game than I was before. Then my contact said, okay, now you interview Suda. And I said, whoa, I am not prepared for that. I have no questions. And he said, what? Come with me. He, he didn't speak much English. The whole time I'm thinking, crap. Come on, Bob, think of a question, think of a question. I really just didn't know anything about the series. Now I am face to face with Suda and his American interpreter. I have to look Suda directly in the eyes and tell him, I have no questions for you. We're not set up for interviews. And I was doing with this with my hands and I kept resisting the urge to bow for some reason. I don't know why that was happening. After many nasty looks, I took the opportunity to take a picture with Suda and then I ran the hell out of that awkward situation. But because the No More Heroes contact took me out of the Nintendo area to meet Suda and because it was the end of the day, I couldn't get back in to play any games. So I did, however, get a chance to play Lightfall first on a PC and then again at a different booth on the Switch. I had a really good time with it. Just looking at the announcement footage, it's a little hard to understand how it works. When you double jump, you summon a cube to appear underneath you. You only get to do this four times per jump. It resets when you hit the ground. It feels similar to Celeste, like a mix between that and Electronic Superjoy. I'm all for this style of gameplay. You know I have an affinity for 2D platformers. It runs at 1080p on both PC and Switch. The frame rate is uncapped on PC, but on Switch it hovers around 45 frames per second, which I thought was really bizarre, so I decided I had to give that version a shot too. I noticed a slight difference, but honestly, if they hadn't told me about that difference, I probably would have never noticed. It's nothing that interferes with the gameplay, and it's nothing that will prevent me from picking up the Switch version. It's definitely worth checking out when it comes out in, wait, now? Oh no, that's a glitch. Well, I remember that they said it was coming out at the end of the month, so I'll wait for that. 
I also got a chance to play Wolfenstein 2 because Bethesda had an event at the hotel next to the convention center and they were giving out free blue moon. So, you know, we had to go. But before we went there, I pretended like I thought that the appointment was at the Nintendo booth. But they saw right through my little ruse. Denied again! Wolfenstein 2 unsurprisingly performs very well on the Switch. If you played Doom at all, you know exactly what it feels like because it's the same engine, which runs at 720p, 30 frames per second on the Switch. I never got a chance to check out the recently added motion-controlled aiming on Doom, but I tried it here on this version of Wolfenstein, and you know what? It's actually great. I might prefer it when playing in docked mode. It's nice to have that little bit of extra accuracy. Wolfenstein isn't exactly a game that requires precision headshots, though. It's more about running around, blind firing, and stabbing people in the neck. By default, the motion aiming sensitivity feels pretty low, which is kind of a good thing because it's best used for subtle assistance. Playing in tabletop mode is very difficult to see anything. I don't recommend doing this basically ever. Either play it in docked or in portable mode with the console pressed right up against your face. It's also a fairly difficult game. I think this is worth a look if you want a cool shooter on your Switch. It's coming sometime this year. One of the best games that I played at PAX isn't even for the Switch. I was playing this Metroidvania Zelda-styled 2D platformer when I heard somebody behind me go, Mario Maker-esque. Then I dropped the controller, turned around and said, yo, what's up, what's going down? I heard Mario Maker-esque tell me everything. Super Retro Maker is a Mario Maker-esque level creation game currently slated for a PC with nine different game styles. Metroid, Castlevania, Mega Man, Ninja Gaiden, Strider, Bionic Commando, Contra, Blaster Master, and Zelda 2. You can mix and match the different styles inside of one level. The demo was one level cut into four different game styles. There's also a bunch of different visual settings for you retro aficionados out there. It's beautiful, and it feels very promising. I'm really excited to see what types of levels people can make with this thing. Supposedly, level sizes are massive. I think the guy said they can fit the entirety of the first Metroid in one level? He might have said Super Metroid. One of the Metroids. Or maybe it was Castlevania, I don't know. Unfortunately, it's only slated for PC with no plans for a Switch release. But this is the type of game that I'd be willing to fire up the old PC for. Yes, I know about Mega Man Maker. This is like that, but you know, like, good. <laughs> On the final day of PAX, between all the other crap I had to do, like a talk with kind of funny, you know, no big deal. I decided I'd wait on that dreaded line anyway, regardless of how big it was. I needed to get my hands on some of these games. Unfortunately, the line was capped. Come back in 10 minutes, they said. Guess what, the line was still capped. After the fourth time that I came back, I noticed that people were forming a line next to where they said the line was capped. I went to the end of that line and there was an enforcer standing there saying that the line was closed and these guys weren't waiting for anything. At that point, I had about two hours till I had to catch my train, and the line was about two hours long, so it just wasn't worth it to wait anymore. So now I'm gonna talk about all the games I didn't get to play based on other people's footage. Dark Souls Remastered. That was literally on the top of my list of games that I needed to play for the Switch. Bandai Namco says that it runs at 1080p, 30 frames per second in docked mode. That's pretty respectable, but Sounds about right for a seven-year-old Xbox 360 game. Let's take a look at Game Explains footage since I don't have any of my own. It's fine, I'm fine! It's hard to tell frame stuttering from a camera feed, but there's no glaring performance issues, so that's good. Game still looks infuriating as hell, so look forward to me rage quitting when I stream that at the end of May. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is already a Wii U game. I don't think we need to go into too much detail about how Wii U ports perform on the Switch, especially something like Donkey Kong Country. It's gonna be just fine. Now you can play as Funky Kong if you're a big fat bitch and need an easy mode. They also had Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy playable, but we don't know anything about that version. If it will hit a normal frame rate, what resolution it'll be. I can't tell you if it feels the same because I didn't get to play it for myself. It's fine! I'm fine. The Messenger is something that I really wanted to play. 
They had it at the Nintendo booth and at the Indie Mega booth. Unfortunately, even the line at the Indie Mega booth was insane. This is a super interesting Ninja Gaiden style platformer. It has a time travel feature that switches between an 8-bit and a 16-bit style. So every single game asset in the game was created twice. As I said before, I'm a big fan of 2D platformers. So this one's already on my radar. Ninja Gaiden was insanely hard. So I'm glad this one looks like it adopts a modern life system, which means unlimited. It will be out for the Switch sometime in 2018. What, are people too good for release dates now? They had other games that I wanted to play, like Sushi Striker and West of Loathing. But that's all the time we have for today. PAX was great. I was super happy with everything that I got to play, and I'm super excited to get these games on my Switch. I'm super excited to stream games like Lightfall, Super Retro Maker, The Messenger, because those are my jam. Of course, I'll probably stream all the other games that I talked about, but I'm significantly less excited for those. Now, Nintendo, listen, I love you, but you have got to be more open and approachable for us creators so that we can literally make commercials for you for free. You make it really difficult for us to promote your product again for free. But special thanks to Marvelous Entertainment, Bethesda, and Bishop Games for setting up appointments with me and making it really easy to try out your games. Thank you, much appreciated. It's a lot easier to get around and film everything that you need to when you have set times to play these games that you can fill in around your other convention obligations. So Nintendo, just like, be better at this <laughs> So what do you guys think about all these early reactions you're seeing about these games for the Switch? Are you a little concerned about anything? Or are you more excited than you were before? Leave it in the comments below. At me on Twitter, all this other social media garbage. Say, have you heard about Twitch Prime? If you have an Amazon Prime account, you could support our channel for free. All you have to do is link your Amazon account to your Twitch account and click the little link in the description. Then you get to subscribe to us completely free and it gives us a little kickback. Now, if you take that, and link it to your Discord account, we give you special perks like our supporter-only Discord chat, which is what's on screen when we do Wolf Den Live. It also gives you guaranteed game time when we stream multiplayer games with viewers. And you get to see these videos whole hours early. Hours because I'm usually really down to the wire when I make these. Anyway, here's our schedule over here. New videos and live streams all of the time. Wolf Den Live on Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern time. You know all that. And of course, the most important things that you could do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who also has a Switch and you want to get them pumped about all of the games to come. Thank you guys very much. I will see you in another live stream. Goodbye.